Hey guys, this is KSP with Tape, and today you join me for episode 52 of KSP Road to Exploration, and we start leaving Kerbin with our beautiful Eve probe, which will be landing on Eve and then leaving Eve, hopefully, although my actual uh, Delta V calculations suggest that it might not quite orbit Eve. But hey, it will be some good science. We get a beautiful shot of it leaving Kerbin. I do apologize if you can hear my washing machine in the background. That is just the loudest washing machine in the world, I believe. Anyway, so the main thing today, obviously, is going to be Duna, but before that we need to do our plane change to Eve, because we've got a little while before we um, have our Duna window, but the Eve probe will get there after we leave for Duna, but before we get to Duna. So yeah, we've just told the flight computer to do this, because I'm having a pretty patchy connection, which I often do when I'm close to Kerbin, which is weird. It's because these dishes have very short and very small kind of angles of communication I don't really know, but... <clears throat> um, but yeah, so here we are just performing our burn uh, to get on target. Well, we're not performing it. The computer is executing it far better than I ever could. It does it rather perfectly. It used to be a bit kind of eh, but now it's pretty good. So yeah, this probe will be getting to Eve, and hopefully it will be awesome, and hopefully it will leave. Well, hopefully it will just land, because that's going to be a big if. I mean, it's a bit of a mess. But yeah, all of that's looking good. So uh, yeah. Godspeed, little probe, but we do manage to get a connection. I was just worried that the uh, antenna wasn't working for some reason, but I so I spent a while checking. But yeah, got myself a connection, so all's good. Um, and yeah, so we're going to make sure we can get some solar power from our solar panels, and this will be great. But anyway, we need to get some crew back on uh, back planet side because, well, uh, we have a Duna mission coming up, and so we need some of these crew right now. So we're going to transmit the science from the um, from the surface outpost on the moon, and then we're going to get the crew out because we have Valentina and Bob Gurman, who are going to be very important, especially for uh, the mission for Duna, because that's our secondary um, pilot and our key scientist. So yes, we're going to get uh, Val into the Thor, and well, get the whole crew into the Thor one, and we're going to abandon the moon base for now, um, which is fine. She does a bit of a backflip because she's just showing off, you know. Look, I can do a freaking space backflip, which is easy on the moon. There's hardly any gravity. And then we're going to get Bob in there and Geofold. I want to say Geofold. Um, yes, and then we're just going to leave. Luckily, the fuel tank is just overhead at this exact point by just pure chance. So yes, let's head on into orbit, get back to Kerbin, spend about 100 days of R&R on the surface, and then head back up to the Concordia and um, go on to Duna, because we have a lot of stuff to send to Duna today, because it's going to be a big mission, because, you know, I don't do small missions. Small missions are for wimps. But yes, uh, the moon base will still be active at some point. Um, that's probably the loudest, but yes, ever. Uh, but yeah, the moon base will be still active um, while we're on the Duna mission, because we still have people at the Kerbin. Um, we don't have, I think we're going to have like one scientist, so that's going to be a key part of our um, Kerbin mission, is finding more scientists whom I don't have to pay for because they're getting quite expensive now, I have a large crew. Um, and yeah, I'm just uh, getting my encounter using the maneuver node to see um, one orbit around, as you can see I'm just moving it so that I can constantly see. But yes, so we will be meeting up with, I'm saying but yes really loudly today, I'm like, it's like peaking my microphone, I'm sorry headphones users, I'm just very excited, we're going to Duna for finally, yes! Oh, I haven't been to Duna in a while, actually. Probably not that long. I think I took an SSDO there a while ago. Has it been that long? Wow, jeez. You know, where does the time go? Where does the time go in space? Um, well, it depends on how fast you go on, Peter. Uh, anyway, <laughs> here we are, just docking to the fuel tank so that we can leave, and then we're going to do that right now. Um, maneuver nodes wouldn't work for some reason, because just... Uh, I don't know, sometimes KSP is just kind of a dick. Um, so yeah, we're just going to leave. Uh, annoyingly, patched conic stops working as well, so when we get our exit, we don't know where we're going, so I do a bit of a quick save and a quick load, and uh, it comes back, which is lucky, because we've got this whole Duna mission we got to do, so we're going to need to see where we're going, not just kind of eyeballing it. Well, yes, it looks like we will um, nicely hit the station right there, and we're going to just slow down in our standard two stage thing, where we slow down half the speed, pretty much, and then meet the station again. Um, so yeah, just just burning some fuel. These Kerbals getting very, very excited to go and uh, visit their fourth um, fourth celestial body, of course. Kerbin, the Moon, Minmus, and now Duna. Actually, and some of them will also be going to Ike. Actually, some of them may just be going to Ike. I haven't really planned that yet. I've just built the ship. Um, but yeah, I, the rest of the maneuvering in, you know, it, there's more interesting things to do today. So here we are just docking. Um, to the top of the Hermes. I'm thinking I might get rid of the Hermes at some point and build a much more modern station. I love the Hermes very much, but it's becoming kind of coming to the end of its usefulness. Um, but anyway, so we're going to need to go and get all of those Kerbals 
off, well, most of the Kerbals off the station. We're going to leave two there. We're going to leave a scientist to continue her research and a pilot just in case we need to fly around a bit. But we're going to get all of the Kerbals off there. Not because they all are going on the Duna mission, just because they've been up there a while. And also the Hermes may be coming to the end of its life cycle because we may be building something really big, something industrial. So more like a shipyard, really, I think, would be really cool. Um, so we're just preparing our Ares 3, the Dragon 2, of course, heading up there. And um, although it launches in an almost similar way to the um, to the ITS, right, because that uses one giant booster and then the rest of the spaceship carries on to, into orbit. Although the booster on this goes all the way to orbit, unlike the ITS, because, you know, Newton's third law or whatever. Newton's second law? I forgot. One of the Newton's law. Basically, it's hard to get into orbit in, in, the, world, in the real world, but not so much in... Um, KSP, unless you're, you know, starting out playing, because then it's really hard to get to orbit. I remember the first weekend I got KSP, I played it for like 22 hours, because it's the best game in the world. Um, and then I got to orbit maybe like four times. Um, it was, yeah, it was interesting. Interesting days. Anyway, so we're going to get our close encounter with the cars station, with the space station, and then we're going to dock on, thought we're going to the Concordia for a second. And then we're going to start grabbing crew. We are going to leave Jillery, one of the scientists, in. I do accidentally take her out and put her in this container, but um, we'll put her back in in a little bit. Um, we're going to start transmitting the science as well, because we also have like 500 science on here, and I really want some ion drives, because ion drives are the win. Um, I don't know what I'll use them for. Maybe some Minmus landers or something cool. Haven't been to Minmus in a while. Our budget has been cut. No more Minmus operations. The actual reason is I uh, just kind of got all of the science from it. And I do have a base on Minmus, but I just that was just for the money. I don't intend on using it. So yeah, we're going to put the scientists back in there and then get the rest of the crew. That'll take a while, so we'll just cut through that. And yeah, so now that everyone is in the space, in, into the capsule and the science has been transmitted, I think it's about time... Actually, we need to land the booster first, so let's go do that. So here we are just deorbiting the booster and then, you know, watching it burn up a bunch and then just, you know... Gonna watch it land. It's getting pretty close to the KSC. Not my closest landing, but uh, it's close enough. And then a standard landing, and then we recover it. Wow, that was some fast footage. Anyway, and now it's time to bring back the crew so that they can have a little bit of a, you know, hug their families because they may well die on this mission. This is a dangerous mission. I mean, I built the spaceship. That is not good for the mission. Uh, so, yeah. And I'm just firing up the engines on this, trying to get as close to the KSC as possible. But we don't, we get reasonably close. That island over there is the second runway. And we land semi propulsively. Anyway! Now, after all of that, it is the final launch before Duna. This is the crew of the Concordia, who will go to another planet for the first time in Kerbal history in this game save. And they will launch gloriously atop a Pulsar X. And we won't watch that because we saw another one today, and I know, yeah, it's an important launch, but it would still be boring. We just literally watched one of these. So here we are just docking to the Concordia. Um, and uh, we're going to put the crew in there. We're going to put uh, Jeb in command. Valentina's going to have a bit of a break in one of the cute crew capsules. We're going to put an engineer and a scientist in there. We're going to put them in places. we got a bunch of crew capsules here. There's a lot of space. They'll have a nice time. They'll have a nice journey to, uh, to, to, to Duna. And then they'll have a nice being on Duna, which will be really great. Anyway, uh, then, of course, I need to land the booster. And I decided, you know what? Fuck parachutes, I'm gonna land this fully propulsively this time. Never, I haven't done that in a while, or at least not in this series, I don't think. So I'm just gonna try it down. I'm gonna try and bring it down on just engines. Um, I li a little bit overburn and basically stop 150 meters above the surface, which isn't great, but I've got a bunch of fuel, so I'm thinking I can do this. Um, I'm kind of hovering for a while, being a moron, and then I just let myself fall a bit, and then just try and catch that velocity, keep it relatively upright and relatively slow, and with the last breath of fuel, I managed to touch down on the ocean, which is rather beautiful. We have three meters per second left. And there we go. Landed propulsively. Bit of fun. Anyway, let me just bring back the Ares 3, um, being, uh, you know, just totally driven by probes at this point, which is annoying. There's no SAS in a mech jeb unit, so that kind of sucks. But now it is time to head to Duna. The first thing that we'll be going is the resource store because that has a big antenna and we want something with an antenna going first because it's the only long, well, no. I mean, the Concordia doesn't have a long range communication device on it. And also if this doesn't go, then it puts the whole mission in jeopardy. So if this explodes right now, which it might because it's shaking around a lot, then everything, you know, we don't have any spare fuel, or any spare food, and you know, we might not even go. But luckily it looks like everything is going well so that, you know, we can go right now. It's shaking a bit, but it's uh, exiting very quickly because it's all liquid fuel and oxidizer, which is so nice because nuclear engines are so slow. 
I built these vehicles especially not to annoy me. Um, but yeah, it looks like we're pretty good. We'll do a bit of a plane change later to get into the proper plane, of course, and do a bit of a tweak as well so that we get down nice and close to Duna so that we can get in, um, get in, you know, get into a good orbit. Point the uh, antenna at the right place and then do a bit of a uh, tweak maneuver, as you can see. Um, it's always a little bit, uh, you know, pernickety kind of here because, you know, you pull it a little bit and it just flies on back. But yeah, it looks like we'll be able to get down to um, Duna pretty nicely, which should be rather good. But anyway, after we've got this all looking rather nice, it's time to send the Concordia. So yes, the crew, all of the everything we need, except I guess the base and, you know, the essential parts of the mission. This could put, carry out the whole mission by itself. Um, even if the base didn't get there, they could still go and land everywhere, which would be fine. Um, I accidentally let the um, booster engine burn a bunch of oxidizer out of the lander, but I, you know, quickly corrected that. And yes, the booster engine will burn out soon. It's just to give me a bit of a kick so it doesn't take too long to leave the system. Again, designed not to annoy me, um, which is very important. The engine does burn out, and uh, our acceleration slows a huge amount, but uh, that's fine because we will be able to leave in one orbit. It's looking rather beautiful with its four engines. We also get a rather nice beauty shot here of probably what's going to be the thumbnail of the Concordia leaving. I realized I didn't put another solar panel on there, the one that I broke, but it doesn't matter. Four was just overkill, so... Yeah, that's good. And then we get our close approach, not an encounter, we'll have to do a tweak for that, um, which we're gonna do now. We're just gonna do a bit of a plane change and a bit of a retro, no, prograde burn. And then you'll yeah, we'll pull it in, get nice and close to doing it. And this, uh, the crew will arrive, I think, just after the station, which should be good, um, because then they'll be able to communicate back with Kerbin. And then we're sending the base. Now this, this part of the mission's a little bit, you know, dicey because I, in all of my infinite wisdom, didn't put a big long-range antenna on this. So this has to hit Duna first time. It has to get riding close to Duna so that the computer can get it into an orbit of Duna, which relies on there being next to no floating point errors in the Unity engine, which is just, that's not going to happen. The numbers are too big. So, yeah, we're going to talk about that, but right now we're just going to decouple the boosters. So... <laughs> Yeah, this is the whole ground mission right here, effectively, other than the rover. And I didn't put a long-range antenna on it. At Duna, it will be fine, because the resource station will be there, and also um, there are a couple of long-range satellites going there, and there's already a couple of long-range satellites in orbit of Duna, so everything will be fine there. But on the way, it will be dead. So at minimum, it has to hit Duna f just first time and get pretty close so that it can get into an orbit. And it needs to be uh, a close enough approach that I will have enough Delta V. So closer than it is right now. It's, you know, it will have to be closer than that so that I have enough Delta V to land this thing. I mean, there are always things I can do. I have a bunch of fuel on the station. I can, you know, as long as this gets into an orbit of Duna, I can work with it. But it would be really nice if this didn't totally screw the mission. I still can do a ground mission without the base, but it can only be a 10-day mission, not a, uh, like, 200 day mission. So yeah, this is quite important. This is also very important to this second mission to Duna. So yeah, I've got a pretty good orbit right there. I've just got to do a bit of a tweak and I'm going to have to do it right now because I don't have a lot of time before I just go totally dead and have no communications with Kerbin. I have probably about half an hour, so it's not like you know, a massive risk. But yeah, the problem is if you go even slightly off where you're trying to burn, you'll go forwards and backwards. So I'm having to use SAS to do this. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. And I'm going to be able to get them really nice and close. Um, and relying on there being minimal floating point errors, this won't be an issue at all. Um, and it will be able to in indeed do the burn. And you can see it's not too big a burn. I kind of yeah, someone weird happens there. But yes, we have everything set up. I'm going to tell the computer to do that and everything will be good. So hopefully this will work fantastically. And even better news, as you will see in a couple of seconds, because you can see the maneuvers getting all fucked up already. Even better news, the um, station will arrive before the base, which means there will be communications around Duna. So I may even be able to do that myself. And this mission will be a success. So yes, we had a bit of a hiccup, but everything is fine. Everything is heading to Duna except for the rover because there's a weird SAS glitch with it currently and I, I just ran out of time. I'm going away this weekend. So, yeah. That will just be at the start of next episode. I'm sorry, that would have been nice to, you know, very completionist to have it in this episode, but um, I just kind of 
ran out of time, so I'm sorry. But yeah, that will also be going, and that'll have a bunch of satellites, but that will be getting there last. Um, so that can't really help us with the base situation. But anyway, this is the end of the episode. I hope you've enjoyed it very much. But yes, this is the end of the episode, and if you'd like to go check out a couple more videos, there's my latest episode of Subscriber Designs, where I test out a stock tank with its stock missiles, and I shoot a wall, and I shoot another tank, it's great. And then there's my latest episode of Fall of Kerbin, in which we attempt to bomb some of Penguin's ships, and regroup our navy so that we can have a giant fleet battle in the coming episodes. And there are also links to my Twitter, Twitch, and Patreon in the description. But as always, I hope you've enjoyed this. This has been Caspi with Tape. I'll see you next time.